In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Praise be to God, Lord of the universe. Is the one and only God, the absolute God. Never did he beget, nor was he begotten. None equals him. O people of the scripture, let us come to a logical agreement between us and you that we shall not worship except God, that we never idolize any human beings beside God. If you turn away, then bear witness that we are submitters. If you refuse to accept this invitation, then bear witness that we only submit to the Lord of the universe, the creator of all things. O oh, people of the scripture, our God is one and the same God. There is no other God beside God. He is the one and only God, the absolute God. All these divisions in the name of God and religion has nothing to do with God or his messengers. For all of God's messengers delivered one and the same message, that the Lord our God is one Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind with all your soul, with all your strength. That means we must devote our religion absolutely to God alone, worshiping, worshiping God without hesitation, without reservation. For this is the only way for our salvation. O oh, people of the scripture, the time has come that we should throw away all the nonsense that has been divisive between us and go back to the source that is God. We are in trouble. The world is in trouble. You may uh, attribute these difficulties to a lot of different things, including the politics here, politics there. But there's a bigger picture. It is God's will that I deliver a message specifically to the United States of America, that America do not follow the footsteps of Europe. Look, a lot of those early vanguards who came to America. They fled persecution. And of course I say it was God's will that come they come to the land of the free, a nation that is to be truly a nation under God, indivisible for all. Back to what I was saying about Europe, uh, I have two questions in here. Uh, number one is that, do any of us know of any of God's uh, prophets or messengers being sent to Europe? Any of the known God's messengers or prophets? I cannot think of one. I'm not saying that the people in Europe are no good. But, well, look, God does what God does, and no one can question God's doing. But let's go back to the roots and see what Europe has done and what Europe has contributed to our planet Earth as a whole. The question is this, uh, if we, if any of us, create something, put our hearts into it, make something, create something that we love, and then find that someone comes along and puts a name other than the name that is relevant to that thing, how would, how would we feel? Don't we feel kind of uncomfortable?
don't we feel kind of disgusted it's what's going on I create these things and then somebody's giving it another name you know uh, we're living on this planet earth a little speck insignificant moat but that's all we got I don't think during our lifetime we're gonna see that uh, we get any kind of a technology that's gonna take us to another planet or something but this is all we got and uh, then we got the moon orbiting us and we ourselves are orbiting our Sun so we got the moon and the Sun and we have other planets in our solar system so if we want to really broaden our vision we say well look we're stuck in this planet and we got these other planets in our solar system uh, and some kind of a connection uh, between us some kind of a gravity going on going on between us but think about these planets what is the closest planet to Sun Mercury do you know that Mercury is a Roman God connected to their pagan theology the next one Venus a goddess of Rome pagan theology thanks to God they couldn't put the name of one of their gods on earth then we got the fourth planet is Mars another Roman God then we got the Jupiter the big one the king of the gods of the Romans pagan theology after Jupiter we got what Saturn number six another Roman God then the next one Uranus another Roman God pagan theology then we got the Neptune another Roman God then we got uh, uh, the last one is Pluto another Roman God of course there is a dispute that this one is too little to qualify to be a planet and, and that's another subject of course which uh, God willing uh, we will expand on it at other times uh, actually Pluto has got a moon orbiting it and it's got enough gravity that the shape of it is a sphere and it's got a moon orbiting it so as if the midgets don't count and this like I said it is another subject that God willing we will expand on it but back to what I was saying God creates these planets and these guys come in here and put the name of their gods on them do you think God likes that God is a very patient God we you humans wouldn't like that at all and we would have reacted much sooner now this Europe that never any of God's prophets were there and they were contaminated by pagan doctrines and pagan theology they are faced with a situation Jesus of Nazareth the son of Mary the Messiah who was indeed born of a virgin and it is God's will that I am the person who can prove it I can go before any panel of intelligent scientists and I emphasize on being intelligent because there are some scientists that are not all that intelligent maybe a smart in their own areas but not very intelligent I can go before any panel of intelligent scientists and prove 
that Jesus was indeed born of a virgin. The Messiah, Jesus. Now, the one who advocated the worship of God alone. The Lord, our God, is one Lord. How many Lord? One Lord. One God. And then what do you do? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. This is the first commandment. Somebody calls him good teacher. What shall I do that I may inherit eternal life, achieve salvation? Why are you calling me good? There is none good but one. That is God. That's the real Jesus. Now, of course, this Jesus of history, the real Jesus, goes through a transition. And the information is transmitted to Europe. Roman and Roman power. And what do they do with it? Are they going to say, okay, God is one? Or are they going to contaminate the religion with their pagan theology and uh, create a Roman Jesus that has nothing to do with the real Jesus that was born in Bethlehem in Jerusalem area. A Roman Jesus. Not the real Jesus, but the Roman Jesus. In 325 AD, a conference was held under the leadership of Constantine, Emperor of Rome, in Nicene. It's known as a Nicene Decree. It was a political move. There was confrontation between the true followers of Jesus, those who were truly believed in divine unity, and those who believed in Trinity, an innovation of Rome, a fabrication, tearing up Almighty God to three pieces, giving three different personalities, which has absolutely nothing to do with the religious religion of the truth, advocated uh, by the prophets of Israel, Jesus, and so on, and beyond that. Ironically, the Constantine, Emperor of Rome, after years, after years, he really accepted the real understanding. He had a real understanding of who really Jesus was and who Jesus was not. After the Nicene Conference, books were burnt and tens of thousands of people were murdered, the true followers of the real Jesus. And as I said, especially after 381, when the Holy Ghost was introduced, uh, Trinity became a doctrine set forth by the Roman Catholic Church. So this religion that comes from Europe has absolutely nothing to do with the truth and the religion espoused and advocated by the real Messiah. In uh, early 16th century, a gentleman by the name of uh, Martin Luther in Germany, he was tired of paying taxes to Rome. It was a financial decision. He decided to split. This was the beginning of reformation in Europe and many other countries follow suit, followed suit and split from the Roman Catholic Church and they started their own. A Protestant religion was born where? In Europe. Political move, but basically they didn't go back to the real Jesus. They didn't understand who the real Jesus was. 
but it was simply, hey, I'm not going to pay my money to Rome. I can do it on my own, the Church of England. Another product of Europe. The last thing that was created in Europe was uh, in uh, 1890, a gentleman by the name of uh, Nathan Burbam, presumably a Jewish person, started the movement, movement called Zionism, Zionist. A religion that has absolutely nothing to do with the prophets of Israel. It was a political move and started in Europe. Ironically, one year before 1890, in 1889, about 80 miles from Vienna, where Nathan was born, a fellow was born by the name of Adolf Hitler. And most of us know the rest of the story. Isn't it ironic that both Zionism and then real anti-Semitism, satanic movement, both were born in Europe. After the Industrial Revolution in Europe, which started in Europe, Europe had the muscle and the movement to go around. Of course, by this time, everybody, they, do, they believe in what they have themselves uh, invented. And uh, as I had said it previously, if we tell a lie and are repeated often enough, we believe it. And now they had the Holy Ghost on their side. And something special about this Holy Ghost is that he actually allows some of these people hear his voice. So these guys really have some kind, some kind of a physical experiment, experience with this Holy Ghost. And uh, so uh, they really believe that this is it. I know God is talking to them. Not knowing that God Almighty does not talk to us so freely. And my advice to those who actually get some kind of a communication from the Holy Ghost is that if they hear a voice inside of them, inside of their head, they should seek refuge in Almighty God from Satan. The rejected. The voice is going to go away. The voice is going to go away. Uh, some people may not like what I'm saying, but all of us do believe in God, don't we? Is it so difficult to ask God to protect us about, from any kind of their wrong things? It should be easy for us to seek refuge in God at all times, if we really truly believe in God. I do. I seek refuge in God from the accursed Satan at all times. Because I do need God's protection. We do need God's protection. Now, after the Industrial Revolution, the muscle, the energy, the guns, and the weapons, Europe has started exporting religions. By then, so much blood was already shed in the name of God and religion throughout the wars here and there holy wars, but now Europe has started actively exporting religion that has absolutely nothing to do with the religion from God, nothing to do with the religion of advocated by Jesus, no, nothing, no religion advocated by the prophets of Israel. So they started exporting vigorously uh, this religion that espouses Trinity to different parts of the world. And uh, what did do the Zionists do? 
Is it possible to think that one of the reasons that a, a, a crazy lunatic devil like Hitler did what he did to the Jewish population and murdered uh, millions? Was it, was it, is it possible to think that somehow this was triggered not by the fact that they had put their fingers into everything and controlling a lot of different things and they have become kind of overbearing in that part of the world was because they were now wanted to be uh, free and independent and a movement has started could could this possibly be something that triggered that lunatic uh, Hitler to do what he did is a possibility but now of all those Jews that they were murdered how many of them were Zionists I don't think a lot of them were Zionists. If they talk about six million, to me it's not the matter of six million. To me, even six person is too many to be murdered. Well, even one life is to be too much to be taken. But uh, a lot of them were innocent people, had nothing to do with it. But somehow, some kind of a way, a disaster was brought upon them. And then, of course, now the Zionists that were created, invented in Europe, they uh, moved uh, to Palestine. How? With guns, with arms not open arms, but with actually weaponry. And uh, they have been doing what they have been doing in another part of the world, exporting an ideology that has absolutely nothing to do with the teachings of the prophet of Ezra, prophets of Israel. Now, Europe is plagued with uh, problems. Some people don't understand that this uh, uh, economic disaster is a plague. The people who uh, thought, uh, oh, we're the right, we got the right religion and somehow and especially after the Industrial Revolution, they thought of themselves as somebody better than the rest of the world. They moved around, colonized different places, abused a lot of continents and nations. And uh, they had fun. It was easy to use and abuse other nations and their wealth sit back and getting lazy. Now the world has changed. They are not accustomed to hard work. And the rest of the world is kind of an awakening. And now these guys are in trouble. Where is the center of problems? Greece? Italy? Do you know how many people these days just commit suicide in Italy? Because of economic problems, and look at the look at the rest of the Europe, and uh, all the problems they have. Financially, they are very close to being bankrupt. That's a plague. That's a disaster. But not only that, the people who exported false religions to other places charmingly or forcibly now they are plagued with what? they are forced to import something that they cannot even imagine Sharia law those of us we got the internet thanks to God to study it what is Sharia law? 
doing, penetrating into the structure of Europe. And what is Sharia law? Something that has absolutely nothing to do with the teachings of the Quran. The people who have been exporting fake religions, now they are forced to face a fake religion coming upon them. There's a verse in the Quran that uh, does uh, really uh, uh, explain this beautifully. And uh, it is in chapter 9, verse number 30. And uh, you remember that uh, those guys, of course, uh, in Europe deified Jesus when he himself says, don't even call me good. The only good is God. The Lord, our God, is just one Lord. The Lord, our God, is just one Lord. And then what do we do? We have to love the God, our Lord, with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. That's the real, real Jesus. That these guys go ahead and deify and, uh, uh, Jesus against his will. That's why in the day of resurrection, he's going to be disowned by the very same Jesus that they're worshiping. This is a verse in Matthew. Jesus says, uh, Many will say to me in that day, in the day of resurrection, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? In your name have cast out devils. In your name have done many wonderful works. And Jesus says, and I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me. Go away, you impure. Go away, you liars. He's going to tell him, didn't I tell you the Lord our God is just one Lord? Didn't I tell you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength? Didn't I tell you don't even call me good? The only good is God. Didn't I tell you I of my own cannot do anything? Didn't I tell you I'm not in here to do the will of my own. I'm in here to do the will of the one who sent me. Didn't I tell you I do not know about the last day and the last hour. Not even the angels in heaven know. Only God knows. How clearer could I tell you that I was not what you are telling people I was. Didn't I tell you those who listen to my words and believe in God who sent me, they shall have everlasting life? I said, listen to my words, believe in God. You shall have everlasting life. You will not come into condemnation, but you shall pass from death to life. That means if you truly worship God, you're not going to even die. Death does not exist for the righteous. We simply come out of our bodies and go straight to heaven. But back to the one that I was saying, the verse that beautifully really explains the situation between the people who uh, uh, are uh, advocating Sharia law and the people who deified uh, Jesus of Nazareth against his will. That is uh, chapter 9, verse number 31. They set up their religious leaders and their scholars as lords instead of God. Religious leaders and scholars as lords instead of God. Others deified the Messiah, son of Mary. They were all commanded to worship only one God. There is no God except he. Be he glorified. High above, needing any partners. In America, I don't know, in probably other places, they say uh, what goes around comes around. When you come up with the false religion and export it, now you are faced to import something that's fake, just as fake as what you exported. And for people who have been uh, 
uh, stealing from other nations and other continents for years, colonizing places. Now get a taste of your better, your, your own medicine. Now some of your countries in Europe are kind of bankrupt right now. And my uh, job is to tell America, America, do not follow the footsteps of Europe. This is a nation under God, indivisible for all. The founders of this nation, they really knew something. They really knew something. Can any of you tell me any of the, any of those among those who established this country, were any of them born again Christians? A term that is used uh, often these days, misunderstood. Look, of course, in a form of material being, we're not going to be able to go back to God. We've got to die out of these bodies, become in the form of a spirit, which is the real thing. The problem is that we humans are so accustomed to what we see, we think what we see is what it is. It's just a vessel. We're in here. Of course, we have to be born out of this body in order to go back. Not the born again that you have invented for yourselves. None of the early vanguards, the people who came to this country, formed this country, were like you. What was the religion of Thomas Jefferson? Go read the books. Did he believe uh, in divinity of Jesus? No, he did not. Jesus did not believe in divinity of Jesus. He never said, I'm divine. He never said, I'm God or one third of a God. What was the religion of Abraham Lincoln? Figure it out. What did he believe in? America, do not follow the footsteps of Europe. Now, we are getting plagued with uh, Zionism here in America. The Zionist movement in America is controlling a lot of things. That's another issue that we should discuss. And then the new cons. Everybody waiting, they're going to do something, force the events so that a human being is supposed to come back and all our troubles are supposed to go away. You guys need to wake up. The second coming has already occurred. The second coming is not a human being, it's a message. It's a message. The final testament. The first time it was sent down in Arabian Peninsula and now for the second time it has come down, it is in the United States of America. It was, its secret was revealed in the United States of America. Oh, you hidden secret, come out and warn. That's in chapter 74. Verses 1 and 2. Ya ayyiha al-mudathir, um fanzar. The secret has come out. Nobody can kill and destroy the message. Inna nahnu nazzalna zikra, wa inna lahu lahafizun. For sure we have sent it down, and for sure we will preserve it. This book is here. It is the book. It is the message. Not a human messenger. It's not the singer. It's the song. For many will sing the song. 
The singers come and go, but the song is everlasting. Surely those who believe, those who are Jewish, the Christians and the converts, anyone who believes in God, believes in the hereafter, and leads a righteous life, will receive the recompense from their Lord. They have nothing to fear, nor shall they grieve. O oh, people, our God is one and the same God. Our Lord, our God, is one and the same. There is no other God beside God. And all, Almighty God does not love the warmongers. Dwight Eisenhower, in his farewell speech, uh, uh, warned America about the military industrial complex. America, what's going on? Are we falling in traps here and there and time and time again? Isn't it time for us to wake up? God loves the peacemakers. Praise be to God, Lord of the universe.